We are a circus of big family tradition. And the way we present our show is the same way that my family presented the show over 175 years ago. There's nothing fancy about what we do here. It's magic, real magic. When you grow up in a circus as a child, you just step into being a clown. Benvenuti, benvenuti tutti. Welcome to the Zoppe Circus. Thank you for coming. We're a classic family circus, which means our families here working together, performing together. Would you like to meet some of our family? First of all, there's my mother, the matriarch of our family. Then I have my sister, Carla, who, with her husband, Rudy, they perform with her dog act. And then we have my sister, Tosca. She has the horses on the show, but she also directs the show. Her husband, Jay, is an amazing white clown. The white clown is the straight clown. He's the best white clown that I've ever seen. The act that my son and I do right now in a show is actually a balloon routine. It's nothing new. I mean, it's thousands of years old. Clowns have been doing it forever. It happens to be really cute when he does it because he's adorable. It's an, it's an unexplainable thing to see my child do what he loves to do. I mean, this, I get this seven-year-old beautiful little boy, and his heart opens up and he gives it to everybody. It's different here, I think, than most places. When we come into this ring, we become family. I believe circus and family are basically the same word. We didn't really have any fast actors from Texas until he came along. Like, I couldn't really believe my eyes. Like, I was in shock. His hands, like, they were always moving. And it was like, there was no, like, thinking about where to put it. It was just like a non-stop, just like, brrr. He's off the charts. He's, like, as fast as a lightning bolt. My name is Trey Griffith and I am the fastest cup sucker in the state of Texas. My goal is to be the fastest cup sucker in the whole entire world. When I first saw Trey begin cup stacking, I was thrilled. Kids on the spectrum are always very passionate and very intense on what their fixation is. And he just shined. I mean, you could see that he was in his element. He was comfortable, he was alive, and he was just doing his thing. Trey took it to a completely different level. He was doing it systematically instead of just kind of for fun. And it was all about getting that next best time. What Trey does in five or six seconds takes me 10 or 12, 13 seconds. We've learned not to ever discount what he says he's gonna do. Sport stacking is using a set of 12 plastic cups and you stack them in a very specific sequence of pyramids and you are racing yourself and you're racing a timer. It's a sport that you don't have to be tall. You don't have to necessarily be able to run quickly. As long as you've got the 12 cups, you've got a mat and you've got a timer, you can stack. To me, it's just mind-boggling to see these stackers like Trey and his friends. And you can tell they're not even looking at the cups that they're stacking. It, it is all muscle memory. I mean, it's so fast when they get to this level that the naked eye cannot see it all. When I found out that I was having a boy, of course, I thought about when I was a boy and playing catch with my dad in the backyard and you flash forward, you, you know, thinking about those types of things with your kiddo. But when Trey found stacking, it's like, okay, cool. Here's a sport that he's into and it's got speed. I've always loved sports with speed and it's got rhythms which make him happy. And I realized what a better way to bond with my child than to learn how to stack myself. I get to stand next to my son, who's one of the fastest in the world, 
and stack with him and be a part of something special. Watching the two of them stack together are probably some of the best moments I've ever had. Our motto has always been, the family that stacks together stays together. We go to these tournaments together, we've traveled together, we've made friends all over the country, all over the world. I mean, it's definitely enriched our lives. I'm Pops, the mentor. What? <laughs> and I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm Nicole Paris, the princess. <laughs> Beatboxing is just simply making sounds with your mouth, making music with your mouth. When beatbox came to St. Louis in the early 80s, it was always about emulating what the DJ did. So I just started perfecting my skill as I got older. And then my wife, she gets pregnant with Nicole. So I would beatbox up against the belly and Nicole would start twisting. So you would see my wife's belly almost like boom, boom, boom. She liked it. She thought it was funny and cute. And then as Nicole got bigger in the belly, it wasn't cute no more. At the age of 13 was my first talent show. I just went home and I said, Pops, I just joined the talent show. You're going to teach me how to beatbox. He taught me how to hold the mic, taught me how to breathe, taught me the basic beat. I went to the talent show, did that. They made me mad at the talent show. They was clapping off beat and they was like, I then started to add my own thing to what he taught me. One night I came home from work and as I'm walking in the door, I heard her making all these strange noise. I had to tell her like, that's not beatboxing. No, don't do that, that's corny. I was like, what? This is when I had to realize and tell myself, look, this is what she wants to do. Me and Pops, we be boxed anywhere all day. Don't even make a difference. No, it, it really don't. We be boxed while cooking, barbershop. When we're ready to be boxed, it literally it happens. doesn't matter. If you go to her YouTube channel, you will see us sitting down, be boxing. And to some folks, it can look like a competition. We're not really battling. It's just... This is just jam session. Just us having fun. This, this is how I bond with my child. Even though, even though 160 I'll, million even people though be I like, Pops, you lost. Pop loser. I want her to be the best. I want her to, to outdo me. Not in outdo me like as in a battle, but I want her to just, just continue to grow and add to beatboxing. Two and a half hours outside of Seattle, in this sleepy little town of Yakima, Washington, lies a hidden empire. And what they've been making, you've used your entire life. It's like one of those things that you go, oh my god, I didn't, that, that was invented? Oh yeah, wow. My name is Stephanie, and I'm the oldest of the Paxton women. My name is Kimberly, and I'm in the middle. <laughs> My name is Melissa, and I am the baby. We are the three sisters behind the Quick Lock Corporation and the little bag closures that you see just about everywhere. And by everywhere, she means everywhere. Typically around bread, but it can be found on a variety of packages from produce to potatoes. We sell billions of Quick Locks a year. <laughs> the invention of the little closures that could dates back to their grandfather, Floyd Paxton. The story certainly is that our grandfather whittled his first quick clock out of a credit card. Whether or not that is actual fact will probably never be discovered. 
But the bag closure business isn't all fun and games. I would say our biggest competition is the wire tie. You know, the thing that, you know, the twist that you can't untwist or get it all mixed up. Oh yeah, those things? Never thought about it. But if we're being honest, I guess I never really thought about bag closures in general. It's always so fun telling the story of the quick lock. It's this little plastic square closure that was invented in Yakima, Washington, and has gone from this little town to being sold globally and internationally. 